Swimming's fantastic. The feeling of being suspended in the water and relieving your muscles and joints, but yet still be able to get your heart rate up and challenge yourself to travel from point to point. It's unique. Its ability to test us, to challenge us, endanger us, reward us, all at the same time. But that challenge is something that I have to continually work on and manage all the time. But it's good for me to do it. So I think that's why I commit to doing it. Water's everywhere around us. We're made of 60% of water. It covers 70% of the Earth's surface. We drink it, we wash with it, we travel over it, we wallow in it. It's intertwined in every part of normal life. We normalise it because of its abundance. Then there's another side of water. It hides in plain sight right in front of us. We see the water, but we don't always see the risks until we're experiencing them firsthand. Years ago, I completed some helicopter underwater immersion training. And the man that had set this facility up had survived three helicopter crashes. An amazing story. And after that third crash, he decided he'd better take the hint and set up a training school and never flew in helicopters again. But when you do the training, it's all very clear, it's safe, you're managed, there's safety personnel, you're given briefings and there's no surprises, you know what you're doing. So here we are, we're strapped into this helicopter cab, suspended above the pool, and the instructions are pretty simple. When you hear the signal, unclip your safety belts and get out as fast as you can. So under we go, and it's very dark, we're upside down, we're three metres underwater, off goes the signal, and I couldn't find the hatch. I opened my mouth in the confusion, and in came the water. I remember it was the adrenaline kicking in, and I started panicking. And I remember in that half second thinking, oh, well, I'll be able to shut my mouth after this breath. But you can't, and the water just keeps on coming and coming and coming. I remember starting to flail around, searching for something to hold on to something that might give me a clue as to a way out. Eventually the safety diver pulled me out and I surfaced coughing and spluttering and the diver looked at me and said are you okay? I said that was awful. Go straight back in right now without giving me the opportunity to process what had just happened. And It wasn't until I started swimming again a few years ago that I realized and what I'd lost in the confidence I'd gained in a real fear. Fifteen years later, I have to deal with that fear and overcome and acknowledge that sensation of the water gripping at my breath each time I put my head under, even in a swimming pool. Good coffee. I've built my confidence back and I now share the water with other swimmers, but I respect the water in a different way. And I know from experience that the water is ambivalent to us land-dwelling folks. It's up to us to learn how to survive it because the water doesn't let up if we're not ready for it.